This is the only video you'll ever need to truly learn all the chords on the piano. We're going to go over every chord you'll ever need to know on the piano. I'm going to teach it to you in the simplest possible way, even if you're a complete beginner. And if you stay till the end of this video, I'm going to give you my free one page download that will make sure that you are never lost when it comes to playing chords on the piano. So stay to the end and I'll show you how to get this completely for free. No opt-in, no email, anything like that. 100% free, no strings attached. Stick around. If you're new here, I'm Jacques Hopkins, and this is Piano in 21 Days, where we keep learning piano as simple as possible, and we're going to do just that with chords here in this video. So put simply, a chord is just multiple notes played at the same time. There's really three main ways that I've seen chords typically taught to those learning how to play piano. The first way has to do with the scale. The teacher will say, well, yeah, like a major chord is the one, three, five of the major scale. The problem with that approach is, in my opinion, learning scales should come much after learning chords. Chords are very, very important for beginners to learn how to play, whereas scales, it's, it's a little more of an advanced concept, and that's for those that are really getting into music theory and understanding how music works. I don't think you should be doing that until you have a better foundation, you can play some chords, you can play some songs, and then you'll truly understand music theory when you're ready for that point. The second way that I typically see chords taught is they'll say, well, you know, a major chord is, it's a, it's a major third combined with a minor third. Well, that's also very, very heavy on music theory and understanding what that even means should come after learning how to play all the chords. Now, the third approach that I see is more for beginners and that is just memorizing the chord. So, hey, you wanna play a C major chord? Well, just remember that it's C, E, and G. You want to play an A minor chord, just always remember that's an A, C, and E. The problem with that approach, while it can work, is that there's actually 27 different types of chords and there's 12 different notes. So if we multiply 27 by 12, that's like 324 possible chords. I don't know about you, but I don't think my memory is good enough to be able to memorize all of those chords. So I'm gonna let you in on this super secret fourth approach to learning all the chords on the piano, and that's with these really simple formulas that I have for you today. So let's go ahead and start with the formula for major chords. Major chords are the most common and popular type of chord you'll find on the piano, and the formula for major chords is simply four, three. Let me show you how we apply that formula. If you wanna play a C major chord, we'll always start with the root note in these formulas. The root note is whatever note you heard in the name of the chord. So in this case, C major chord, the root note is C, so we'll start on C. Let's put a finger there. Now in these formulas, you always go to the right on your keyboard. So the first number in the formula for major chords is four. So that means we go to the right, the next four keys from the root note. It does not matter if it's a white key or it's a black key. It's a little secret that not a lot of people will tell you the black and white keys, they all do the same thing. They're, they're all the same, they're all just keys. Don't let that intimidate you. So we have the formula, we're gonna go to the right, the next four keys, doesn't matter if they're black or they're white. So one, two, three, four. And then the last part of the formula for a major chord is three. So then we'll go to the right three more notes. One, two, three. There we have a C major chord. Now with the left hand, what I like to do is play two more root notes like this. And if your hands are small, you can't reach that. No worries, just play one root note like that. Now the reason learning chords is so, so important, it's not just so that we can check a box, hey, now I've learned chords. The goal with you and piano should be to ultimately play songs and songs that you want to be playing on the piano. And chords is just a stop along the way to get to songs. In fact, when you start learning piano, the very first thing you should do is you should learn the notes. Once you learn the notes, then you learn the chords because that's just multiple notes played at the same time. Once you know chords, you can start playing songs, right? So far, we've only gone over major chords, but there's a lot of songs with just major chords, especially back in like the 50s and 60s. There's a chord progression. When you put the chords C major, F major, and G major together in a sequence, I call that the twist and shout progression. And it sounds a little something like this. You may recognize it from twist and shout. And that was just three major chords, but certainly not all songs are written with just 
major chords. There's lots of types of chords. The next most common type of chord after major chord is called a minor chord. And the formula for minor chords is just the reverse of major chords. So the formula for any minor chord is three and then four. So let's say I wanted to play an A minor chord. We'll start at A, go up the very next three notes, one, two, three, and then the very next four notes, one, two, three, four. There's an A minor chord, I'll add in the left hand. So now we should know all the major and minor chords across the entire piano. So let's try a few more. Let's say I wanted you to play a D major chord. We'll start at D, go to the right the very next four notes. Because the formula for a major chord is four and then three, we go one, two, three, four. Uh-oh, we have a black note, that's okay. And then three, one, two, three. That's a D major chord, I'll play two Ds in the left hand. Now I'll give you a really tricky one to make sure you've been paying attention. Let's go with a B flat minor chord, okay? So our root note can be a black note, that is perfectly okay. And to find a flat, flat is always to the left of the note that we hear, and sharp is to the right. Right and sharp both have five letters, flat and left both have four letters, that's the best way to remember that. So I'm looking for a B flat, because we're gonna play a B flat minor chord. Here's B, so I'm going to the left to find B flat. Now it's a minor chord, so we take the formula three and then four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna play two B flats in the left hand. B flat minor chord. You see how we didn't just memorize what those notes are? In fact, if you would have caught me a few minutes ago and just said, hey Jacques, what's a B flat minor chord? It would have taken me a while to really tell you without having a keyboard what notes they were. But because I know the formula, I can easily find any chord I want to at any time. So now you're equipped with these simple formulas for major and minor chords, and let's say you're going about your, your piano journey and you wanna play All Too Well by Taylor Swift, and you look up the chords to that song on the internet for free, it's really easy to find, and you see it's three major chords and one minor chord, and now you can start to play All Too Well by Taylor Swift. But unfortunately, not every song is just major and minor chords. We do need to learn how to play more of the chords so that we're not surprised when those chords are in a song that we want to be playing. So let's say, for example, you wanted to play Easy On Me by Adele, and you pull up that chord chart, and if you only know the major and minor chords, you're gonna have a problem, because you're gonna be like, well, what's this major seventh chord, minor seventh chord, is that different from a regular seventh chord? Or if you wanted to play Ed Sheeran's Bad Habits, and you pull up the chords, and you see this weird suspended chord, or there's something else, and you see a slash chord, I want to give you the tools and the formulas you need so none of these more advanced chords ever trip you up. So let's go ahead and pull up our one page PDF on the screen and you can see the formulas for all the chords that you're going to need to know how to play. Those first two formulas right there, those are the ones we went over already. A major chord, there it is. The formula is four, three. An example of what that might look like written down on a chord chart would be uh, just a big C if it's a C major chord or if it's a B major chord, it would just be a big B with nothing else after it. The next one on there are minor chords, which you might see written with a, a big letter and then a little M for minor. So if it's a C minor chord, you'll see a big C and a little M. If it's an F minor chord, you'll see a big F and then a little M. And of course the formula for that is three and then four. The next chord on the formula sheet is called a seventh chord. And you might see this written with the note name followed by the number seven, for example, C7. And the formula for any seventh chord is four, three, three, okay? So let me show you how we would apply that. We wanna find a C7 chord. Well, we'll take our formula, start at C, then we'll go up four notes, one, two, three, four, and then three, one, two, three. It's actually very similar to a major chord so far, but then we're adding on another three. One, two, three. There's a C7 chord. We can play two Cs in the left hand. The thing about seven chords is I'm actually gonna give you four different ways to play a seventh chord depending on what you find most comfortable. Now, all four of these ways include the exact same notes. You'll see that. So this is option one for how to play a seventh chord just like this. Option two would be instead of adding this note from the, the, the major chord, adding this note up here, we can add it right here and it gives it a nice little, a little bit different sound, but it sounds really nice. Okay, that's option two. Option three is to just play a regular major chord in my right hand and let's add in that 
seventh element to this chord in the left hand by taking this note and playing it here instead. So you could play a seventh uh, C7 like this. This would be option three. Or option four is actually my personal favorite. And let's shift this whole left hand up here, just like this. We don't do major chords like this so close together because then my thumbs would be overlapping right here on this. But with seventh chords, you can do that because my thumbs are not trying to play the same note. But it's up to you which option you would like to use for seventh chords. They all work, they're all seventh chords. It's just a matter of which one sounds the best and feels the best. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you go ahead and hit that like button on this video. And if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and consider hitting the subscribe button below this video and hitting that bell if you wanna get notified when we release new videos like this. I'd really appreciate you doing that. It really helps the channel. Don't feel obligated though. Let's get back to the video. So next on our list is something called major sevenths, which is different than, than seventh chords. This is different. And the formula, instead of four, three, three, is actually four, three, four. So what a major seventh chord looks like, let's just stick with our trusty C example. We'll go up four, and then three, and then four. So it's still a major chord, but then we're adding four more notes instead of three more notes. One, two, three, four. That's a C major seventh chord. Once again, you've got four options on how, do you, how you want to play it. I would say this is option one, all right? Option two would be to take this note and bring it down here, okay? So that's also a C major seventh chord. We could play that extra note in the left hand and just play a regular major chord in our right hand like this. This would be option three. Or my favorite option four would be to bring this hand over here. And that is also a C major seventh chord. Next on the list is minor seventh chords, okay? Minor seventh chords have the formula three, four, three. If we want to play a C minor seventh chord, we'll start at C, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, ah, it's a minor chord so far. And then we add a three to it, one, two, three. C minor seventh, option one. C minor seventh, option two. C minor seventh, option three, and my personal favorite, C minor seventh, option four. So those are the three different types of seventh chords you might come across, regular seventh chords, major seventh chords, minor seventh chords. So if you come across on a chord sheet, let's say you see a, a G minor seventh, don't freak out. You can memorize these formulas and, and know, okay, my, it's a minor seventh, so it's three, four, three, I'll start at G, I'll do all this. Or maybe you've got the uh, fancy one pager printed out like I do and have it posted by your piano and you can just refer to that and be like, oh, three, four, three, I've got this. So start at G. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then pick whichever option that you would like to use for playing that chord using the right notes. Next up on the list, we have a slash chord. And that's kind of when you'll see one chord slash another chord. And, and this type of chord doesn't have a formula per se. You'll see the description on the sheet here, but basically we play one chord in our right hand and another in our left hand. So for example, if we wanted to play a C over G, then we'll play a C major chord in our right hand and we'll do two Gs in our left hand like this, okay? Let's say we came across an A minor over E. We would play an A minor in our right hand and we would play E in our left hand, just like that. So with slash chords, just remember the first chord you see, right hand, slash the second chord you see, left hand. Next on the list is suspended chords. You see the examples here, C sus, C sus four, C four, those would all be played the same way. The formula for those is five and then two. C suspended, start at C, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, C suspended. The next one on the list is called a second chord. It's the opposite of a suspended chord. You might see this written for a C2 as in C and then the number two, or you might even see it written as C sus two, but just remember that's a C2 and not a C sus, okay? So the formula for that is two and then five. So we'll start at C, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, 
there's a C2, C sus2, and so on. Now you may come across something called like a ninth chord or add nine. What that refers to is adding in the ninth note of, of the scale, which we're not really going over just yet. Actually, we will in just a few minutes, but the ninth note of a scale is actually the same as a second note of a scale. So to make things super easy, I always play C9, C add nine, anything like that, just like I do C2s. And so the formula for those is also two five. That's why you see it on the same row on this sheet. So let's say you come across an F add nine. Well, then that's still gonna be the formula two five. We'll start at F, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I would play that for an F add nine. If I saw just F nine without the words add, I would also play it like that. Technically speaking, it's a little more complicated than that, but I promise you it's going to sound just as good if you play an F9 like that. The last two chords you see on the sheet, you're gonna come across very, very, very rarely, but it'd be nice to know how to play them. For diminished chords, the formula is three, three. To remember that, just think of when you diminish something, you kind of make it smaller. So whereas major chords and minor chords ha had a three and a four in the formula, diminished just has the baby three and the baby three, right? So C diminished would be one, two, three, one, two, three. There's C diminished. It sounds kind of spooky. Like it's, it's not a super popular chord. Now augmented, when you augment something, that makes it bigger. So not three, three, not three, four, not four, three, but four, four, that's augmented, all right? So C augmented would be C, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There's a C augmented chord. Also not a great sounding chord, also not a chord you'll come across very often, but like I said, those are still nice to know about. The last things on this sheet that you'll see are actually a couple of formulas for scales. And what a scale is, is it's the notes that are available to you in a song that's within a certain key, right? So if a song is in the key of C major, then the notes in the C major scale are what are available to us in that song. That's pretty much how it works. It's a little more complicated of a concept than is good for this video. It's getting more deep into music theory, but I've got a very, very deep dive yet simple uh, video all about music theory, music theory one-on-one -on -one, that I'd invite you to check out on the channel. I'll link to it on this page with one of those fancy cards right now. But since we're going over formulas, I wanted to go ahead and give you the formula for the major scales and the minor scales while we're at it as well. The formula for major scales is two, two, one, two, 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 one. So for example, C major scale, two, two, one, two, 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 one, all white notes. That's why the C major scale and songs being in the key of C major, it's the most popular one because it's all white notes. But if we wanted to play like a, I don't know, a, uh, let's go with the D major scale, we'll just apply the formula. D, two, two, one, two, 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 one. That's D major scale. That's how we do major scales. For minor scales, the formula is two, one, two, two, one, two, two. And you would apply that just the same way we did with the major scales. How that's useful at this point in time in your journey, think of it this way. I told you earlier there's 27 different types of chords, and we didn't go over 27 different types. What we did was we went over by far the most common types you'll ever come across. On very rare occasions, you'll come across certain chords that you'll just hardly ever see, but then if you kind of know the scale, you can kind of figure it out. For example, you might come across like an E6, but you just, you just say, okay, what's the, what's the major scale formula? Okay, E, I'll figure out the E major scale. It's just adding in the sixth note of the scale to a regular major chord. Or if you see like a, a, a C11, um, right? That's a type of chord, an 11th chord. But if you understand all of this, then you can just add in the 11th of that scale. So that's my reason for showing you the scales at the bottom of this is so that you can figure out any additional chords you might need to that aren't on this list. But I promise you, pretty much all the popular ones, the common ones you might come across are on here. So I told you, if you stuck around with me at the end, I would let you know where you can get your copy of this super handy download. And um, the time has come for that. So. Um, Come on, let me, let me tell you where you can find this. Um, it's just 
below this video. Just scroll down below this video. You'll see a link and the link is going to take you right to this document. Like I said, there's no, um, there's no paywall. There's no, um, you don't have to give me your email address or anything. You can click right on it. You'll get straight access to it. Print it out. I would really encourage you to print it out and post it by your piano and really learn chords the easy way. Don't overcomplicate learning the piano. Let's make it fun. And if you enjoyed learning about chords the easy way and you want to continue learning piano the easy way overall and be playing songs really, really quickly, then I would encourage you to check out my free workbook as well. It's called Learn 36 Popular Songs in Just Five Days. And it allows you to do just that. It takes this chord-based approach and then applies it to learning songs. It's yours for free as well. We'll link to that down below too, or you can just head over to Piano in 21 Days. Dot com. So thanks again for watching and I look forward to being your piano teacher.